I've had a love affair with cars my whole life. I build them in my shop, and I race them both on and off-road. I've spent years on the auto show circuit talking about cars, but now it's time to get behind the wheel and find the next adventure. Together, we're setting out to tackle all things that every car enthusiast should do. This is The List. Hey everybody, welcome to The List. I'm Jesse Combs. And I'm Patrick McIntyre. Today we are in Bucklow, Germany to embark on a journey that should be on every car enthusiast list. Drive the German Autobahn. Now we're in an M3 right now, which is an incredible car in its own right, but with the governor limited to 255 kilometers per hour, we may need a little more speed on the unlimited sections of the Autobahn. So we thought we'd start at the Alpina factory to meet up with CEO Andreas Bovenseipen, who's going to hand us the keys to a brand new B7. It's got a top speed of 307 kilometers per hour, which for us is 191 miles per hour. We're going to ring that bad boy out on one of the most famous roads in the world as we check Drive the German Autobahn off our list. Hello, you Hello. must be Jesse and Patrick. Yes. Welcome yes. to Patrick, Alpina. Nice to meet you. My name is Andy Bovensiepen. I welcome you uh, to Alpina. And I think you have chosen a great car for your Autobahn drive event, our B7. It's a really fast toy with 186 miles per hour. Each car is produced at the BMW plant. Then it's delivered to Alpina for the final touches. They have two signature colors, Alpina Green and Alpina Blue. First up, we're headed into the workshop where the final production takes place. How would you sum up what happens in this room? Is it just the installation of body parts and interior, or is there more that goes on? No, of course, it's a, the a final assembly of the whole car. It means interior work, like, like seats, B-colored seats, door panels, middle consoles with nicely made new leather. Of course, it's aerodynamic parts for front and rear. And, of course, every car undergoes a test drive. The aerodynamic parts of the car include a front spoiler, which has a large air intake for cooling and a diffuser because Alpina cars are capable of much higher speeds. And this is an important component to maintaining safety and performance at those increased speeds. So here's our workshop uh, engine assembly, especially development engine. Here we see a mechanic, he is working uh, on a B7 development engine. And what is it about an Alpina engine that sets it apart from say your standard BMW engine or any other engine out there? Okay, we use uh, BMW parts as a base because it's, they have great engines, mm -hmm. but of course we have our exhaust system to get more horsepower. We have bigger turbos which we are using in the B7 engine. And of course we have our new software for the engine. We have different pistons, so the horsepower goes up from 400 horsepower to 540. Okay. Yeah, Jesse and Patrick, here we see the final assembly of a B7. The rear diffuser gets fixed. Another detail I would like to show you while the car is on the lift is the Alpina wheels. If you look at the wheel, do you see a valve where you put in the air? No, how do you fill up your tires? This is very special detail to Alpina wheels. I turn it here, the Alpina emblem. There's a lock. I can open the lock and beneath is a valve. So here we see the blue veil and we like to get it back in one piece if possible. <laughs> yeah, here's a nice V8 twin turbo. It's uh, 500 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque. Now the most important thing to experience it. The key is inside the car. I wish you fun. One of the first things you do when you hit the Autobahn is you start scanning for cops. You're thinking, I'm speeding, I'm gonna get in trouble. But the fact of the matter is, it is unlimited freedom on this thing. Now, just like in most countries, the right lane is for normal travel. Now, the left lane is for passing only. So you have to get out into the left lane pass and then get back into the right lane because you never know when somebody's going to be coming up on your rear end going 200 miles an hour. With all this high speed driving on the Autobahn, you might think it's dangerous, but a study was done here in Germany and for every billion kilometers traveled, there's only 2.2 lives lost compared to the United States where that number is actually double. So that tells me Germany's a little safer, even though it may be faster. Now here's an interesting one for you. Coming up on somebody in the left-hand lane, 
and flashing your lights or forcing them to move over is considered coercion. And the police do not like that. All right, so the traffic is cleared. I'm gonna give it a shot here, see if we can max this bad boy out. I got my left blinker on, so everybody should know I'm coming up fast on them. 250, 260, 270, 275, 280, hold. No, 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 no. Break hard on this one. Hmm. Driving Autobahn is a blast, but driving at high speeds burns a lot of fuel. This is ridiculous. I mean, it's fun to drive on the Autobahn, but uh, we're gonna spend almost $200 to fill up the tank every time we stop. All right, let's get back out there, burn a little more fuel. I'm driving. Okay. Here's an aerial view to put into perspective what it looks like to travel at three times the speed of another vehicle. This diagram shows two lanes of traffic, a truck traveling at 65 miles per hour in one lane, then us in the B7 traveling at 187 miles per hour in the other. My goal is to break the 300 kilometer per hour mark in the unlimited sections. 187 miles per hour or more should be enough to give me goosebumps on a public highway. 280 and I got traffic in my way. My left blinker's on but they, again, don't see me coming around these turns. The crazy thing about this car is that it honestly, you can't tell how fast you're going. Like, no. it doesn't feel like you're going over 150 miles an hour. No, at all. so smooth. And now the rain is coming back. So there's a lot of different factors when you're trying to reach these speeds. Okay, here we go again. Okay, 230, 240, shit, 250, 260. 70. Two. Car in front of me. Car in front of you. God, come, come on. on. Uh, wow. Break, 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 break. When you travel through Europe, you notice that there is a whole bunch of really cool small micro cars. But those have about 50 horsepower. What we're dealing with in this is 10 times that. 500 horses. So coming up on a little micro car in this vehicle on the Autobahn can be a very scary situation. I am bound and determined to get that B7 up to its top speed. It's a very rare opportunity to be able to have a car like that on the Autobahn where there are absolutely no limits, so I'm going for it. 270, 280, yeah, 290. Yeah! There we go, there we go. You have just hit 300. We're at 300. You got cars right in front of you. I love it. Holy crap. Thank goodness this car has big brakes. Oh my god, you're not kidding. Going 187 miles an hour, granted, you're going fast, but for the most part, I think I just had a huge smile on my face thinking, I'm totally getting away with this. What am I going to do now? I can't go back home and drive 70, maybe 75 miles an hour. I just had a chance to go a hundred more than that. Well, I am sad to say that our journey through Germany on the Autobahn has come to an end, but we can definitely say that we reached speeds on a public highway that we never thought possible. And it's all thanks to the generosity of the folks here at Alpina, this amazing B7 that we were able to check drive the Autobahn off of our list. Unfortunately, now it's time to give the keys back. Mm -mm. What do you mean? Mm -mm. I'm not giving you the keys back. Mm -hmm. Is, is um, stealing a car on our list somewhere? Oh.